So, one of the things that I do um, before each Celtic festival is I make a lot of preparations. And this festival, of course, Samhain, is also the beginning of winter. So the 1st of November is the first day of winter in the Celtic calendar. I was talking about this on my podcast on my website, beeltonacottage.com. So what have I been doing here in the sitting room to prepare for winter? Well, I've pulled out all the furniture. I moved the big chest that was here. There was a big Georgian chest. And I've cleaned the floor. And it was also partly to do with wanting to paint the sitting room, you know, because I've been talking about this as well, this planning. I've had the pot of paint in the cupboard over here for the past two years. So painting is on my mind. So it's all sort of coming together in the form of preparation. So I've also moved the sofas. So they're now in a nice kind of format for the winter, which means that, you know, you're kind of snuggling up closest to the stove. As you see, a little girl over there is doing. <laughs> Always, always the most comfortable and warmest seat. She is clever. So I'm continuing to bedeck the windowsill for Samhain. And I've moved my DVD player, which is the screen. And I've also moved my stereo. So the stereo is down there and the chest i'll show you and the screen is in here because again of course it's about the winter and preparing for the winter so the beautiful old well it's over 200 years old georgian chest is here and the screen i don't know if you can see it it's just there the overhead lights here in the cottage don't work, not in the bedrooms here at the back. Because years ago, some little mice got into the loft and they chewed through the wires. So we've had to seal those wires off. And at some point, when I can afford it, I'll get an electrician in to scramble about in the loft and bring the illumination back to the bedrooms. In the meantime, of course, I've got these beautiful, well, I've got a lot of beautiful old lamps. You know, I was collecting, um, see this one here. This is a beautiful um, Michael Kennedy one. And as you know, I've been collecting Michael Kennedy on the cheap for quite a lot of years. Oh, look who's followed me in. Well, aren't you the nosy Parker? <laughs> It's not time for bed and you're not getting up on my bed. She loves to get up here because I put the electric blanket on. I am going to buy you a little heated mat for your beddy buys there. So let's go ahead. Come on, come on. That's it. So there we go. Just a little um, intro to this video to let you know that you know life moves on here at Bealtaine. I'm constantly doing stuff, shifting things around, recreating. <laughs> it's all good work. But I'll tell you what, it's a bit of a cold day. Now, one of the nice things is, look, I can get behind the sofa now to go up close to the window and look out. This is a beautiful view since I cleared this little bit here, there on the corner of the driveway. See? So I think we're just about ready to go outside. Come with me, because I want to talk to you about magic. Well, talking about magic, I have found over the years that virtually everything I have imagined or 
longed for and visualised and kept at the forefront of my thoughts has happened here at Bealtaine. What you're looking at now is in fact a temperate rainforest and how this has been created over the course of 19 years is truly magic. The people who believe in manifestation and the law of attraction will tell you to visualise something, to really feel it, and you will receive it. Hmm. And, you know, workers of magic, you know, people in, in Wiccan groups, etc., they use the same principle to infuse their spells with energy in order to create a desired outcome. And this is where it begins to get interesting because in fact, as I've said before, in reference to quantum physics, scientists have recently found and it's been through all the work that's been happening at CERN, C-E-R-N, check that one out, They've recently found that an observer's thoughts changes the way subatomical particles behave. You know, basically, they've proven that your thoughts could and actually do influence and create the physical world around you. Now, here at Bealtaine, over the course of I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years of making these videos, I refer continually to the importance of light and the fact that the ancient peoples of this land followed the light. And, and quantum physicists have discovered that everything in the universe, everything that is seen and unseen, is all made up of energy referred to by the ancient peoples of this land as light. And now for some of this actual science behind this. So most of us know that everything is made up of molecules, right? Which consists of atoms and quantum physicists found these atoms are made up of sub atomical particles, which include photons, leptons, electrons, neutrons and quarks, etc., which are made up of pure energy or light. In short, it proved that everything is made up of pure energy of light. And I reference Albert Einstein's discovery of E equals mc squared. In short, it proves it. Now, if you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can research quantum entanglement. And now, of course, you know all the work that I have done here at Bealtaine Cottage on the Bealtaine Project has been, in many ways, the application of magic. Magic, as I often say, is something that we simply don't understand but we know within science it exists. It's just by another name. And to walk in this Irish temperate rainforest each day is pure magic. And now the night is drawing in. So I'm going to finish this video and post it up for you. And I hope you begin to think a little bit about magic and how powerful that energy is and how, and this is very important, how it can be applied for good or for evil. 
And P.S. We need more good in this beautiful world. Blessings to you all.